Agree or disagree? Being able to twerk in a handstand, a totally necessary and functional life skill, right? Maybe not, but what I do wanna share in this video is an underlooked and underappreciated way of approaching any movement, but we're gonna apply it to handstands. And I've got five drills for you that will make your handstands feel more stable. And again, you can apply these to other movements besides handstands. So even if you're not into handstanding, understanding this concept will help you move and feel better. And it's the idea that in order to do one movement, we have to be able to do numerous micro movements that are carried out in multiple joints across the body. So to understand this, let's say you hurt your ankle and it hurts to go into dorsiflexion. This is dorsiflexion. So when you're walking, you avoid dorsiflexion and you end up with a limp. This is helpful in the short term, right? But it's not an optimal way to walk for the rest of your life. This is similar to what psychologists call neural chunking, small individual pieces of a set of information that are bound together to create a meaningful whole. So another example that may help us understand this is through how we speak. So what happens if you learn a new language as an adult? You may speak with a pretty sexy accent, oui? <laughs> Sorry about that. But this is because words are made of individual sounds, individual movements we make with our mouths. So if I put together the sounds, y, o, g, a, it becomes yoga, right? A few little sounds to make one word. And when someone has maybe a sexy foreign accent, it's because even though some of the individual sounds are missing or a little bit different, you can understand the person overall because the words as a whole are still intelligible. So for example, a native English speaker may struggle with the French R, huh? so they may say bonjour, merci, but it's still close enough for a French speaker to understand bonjour, merci or a Parisian to pretend that they don't understand. <sighs> okay, are you with me? Individual sounds don't need to be quite right in order to make the overall words understandable, but you're still gonna have an accent. So in the same way, let's go back now to that limping walk. You can still make the overall movement of walking to get to where you're going, even though you're doing it without moving into full dorsiflexion. So what does this have to do with handstands? When you ask your body to make a movement, that whole macro movement, your body will always do what you ask it to do. It'll get the job done. The macro movement will be accomplished one way or another. But like with that limp, if your individual joints in your body aren't maybe going to the full range of motion that's needed, then other joints will compensate to get the job done. So maybe you struggle with the shoulders, they don't wanna open up, but you wanna get your feet up over your head. Remember, your body will do what you ask it to do one way or the other. And so, without the shoulders opening up, you end up maybe with a banana back. But if you can open up more through the shoulders and just work on that individual micro movement, then the whole entire macro movement becomes easier, or if not easier, more stable, it'll feel stronger, right? And so how can we start to figure out these individual little sounds, like when we're speaking, these individual micro movements that we need to work on because we're all different? Well, there are two parts. One, it's useful to look at your individual joints as a whole through movement and just start to pay attention to what each wrist is doing, what each shoulder, knee, hip, vertebra, etc., is doing. And yes, this takes time, yes, this means getting really geeky, taking time to care and be mindful of how you, as an individual, moves. And in a minute, I'm gonna share with you a few of my favorite drills that will probably be helpful for you because even though we are a little bit different, these are based on very common compensatory movements that I've seen over the years of teaching handstands and also in myself. 
But first, the second part of this is taking that awareness then of where we are not able to move so well, which little joints, you know, and isolating the movements in those areas. So for example, just doing your cat cow like this, moving along every vertebra along the spine, that's great, but you can break that down and maybe just isolate it to the pelvis. Trying to keep the rest of the spine neutral and only moving through the pelvis. And start to explore the tiny nuances that you can feel when you isolate just those movements. You could also just isolate it to the thoracic spine. So the part of the spine that connects to the ribs. And obviously we're still moving multiple joints here, even though, and I do invite you to do this with me, we're avoiding the scapula, the shoulder blades moving, the neck and the low back. Hopefully you're moving as minimally as possible. So we're still moving through like 12 vertebra because that's how many thoracic vertebra we have. But we're breaking it down into a much smaller section of the spine. And this way, when we do a whole entire cat cow, we're a little bit more aware of if our thoracic spine or our pelvis is getting involved and how much. And listen, we need that awareness for twerking. Being someone who's quite hypermobile, I am the queen of compensation. So trust me when I tell you these movements are game changers. It's why I put a lot of this into my yoga classes because it can be so helpful just to know if you're unable to isolate a certain movement or a certain joint. So try isolating your pelvis with me now. There was a time I couldn't do this. Keeping your shoulders and mid back totally still, can you just cat cow through the pelvis? Even now I start shaking a little bit. And if you struggled with that or couldn't do it all together, then you can probably guess that in larger macro movements, like in a handstand, you're for sure not going to be aware if you're sticking your booty out and the rest of your body will have to compensate at best, but what's more likely is that you're gonna struggle to balance. And this exploration is virtually never ending. And to me, that's a really beautiful thing. Think about how boring life would be if you had everything figured out. Plus training these micro movements and getting them like downloaded and fully installed into your brain's movement maps is why sometimes you can just do these little drills for weeks and then go back to a skill that you haven't practiced at all and do it more easily. So there we go. That's one drill already that you can do to bring more awareness, coordination and mobility to your pelvis. Let's look at some other common areas and drills to help with handstands. Number one, the fingers and hands. So if you've got floppy fingers and hands, then you're not giving yourself a great base to stand on, are you? So what we want is to be able to grip with our fingers without letting the hands of the knuckle come up. So try this with me now. Bring your fingers as much into extension as you can. It doesn't matter how far back they go, but then just work, work on bending just your finger joints, okay? Next, put your hand on the floor and do the same thing. You could even do it one finger at a time. Remember these micro movements, they may be new to you, so it's gonna take some time to practice them and get them feeling familiar. So if that's you, maybe bring this into your yoga practice, your gym sessions, or while you're waiting around for the handstand genie to come along and grant you perfect handstands without having to work for it. That's how I got my handstand actually. Next, the shoulders. We've already looked at how we need the shoulders to be able to get into a straight line. Now, this is a complex joint, okay? So we could look at multiple things here, but to keep it simple, one hanging can be a great way to kind of passively stretch the shoulders into that elevation that we need to unlock this position where the shoulders are up by the ears. Then two, to add more activity around that joint, Try this with me again, come into that tabletop position, but crawl your hands forward and start to press your hands into the mat and then lean your body weight back towards your heels. So you're kind of mimicking that same hanging from a bar position, letting your shoulders drift up towards the ears. Then from here, 
Can you, maybe pressing down with one arm, lift the other arm up, keep pressing it so that the shoulder is by the ear, rotate as much as possible the elbow crease to point up towards the ceiling. This is the position that will engage your muscles around your shoulders in a way that will give you maximum stability in handstands. You feel all those muscles working? So a bonus add-on is to bring the shoulder joint through a few circles here. This is a great way to bring more awareness of the joint in this position. Plus, by circling slightly, we're inviting ourselves out of any hidden little compensatory movements that we're not aware of because you're giving yourself a wider aperture in which your shoulder moves into this place of flexion. Okay, let's do the other side. So imagine that you're hanging from a bar, let your body's weight get heavy as your hands crawl forwards, letting the shoulders drift up towards the ears. So this is our shoulder elevation that we're looking for. Then lift the arm up, turn the elbow crease to point up towards the ceiling as much as possible, and add in those shoulder circles. So you're kind of looking for keeping the elbow crease pointing in the same direction through the whole circle and making the circle as smooth as possible. Maybe it's not a circle to begin with, maybe it's more of a polygon, that's okay. And by having the hips back here, it's kind of taking away our ability to compensate by letting the ribs flare out. So the shoulder is having to do the work of finding that straight line. Instead of if we were to do it sitting upright, then the shoulder could stop and then the ribs flare out to make the whole macro movement happen. Good job. And remember, if that felt super hard, that's a beautiful sign that you've perhaps just landed on what you could benefit working on the most. And that's exciting, right? So maybe bring this pushing up, rotating movement into your yoga practice or your everyday life and begin to make more of your macro movements involve this micro movement. And then it'll feel more natural when you're trying to do it upside down. Third drill, come back to that tabletop position. Why do I keep putting this on if I'm just gonna take it off again? Lift one leg up behind you. Keep that leg lifted as high as you can and then go back to those pelvis cat-cow movements. And you'll notice that as you move into a cat pose and maybe just stay there, trying to point your sit bones down, you're gonna have to work a lot harder to keep that leg lifted. And that's because now the hip joint alone is working to go into extension. We've isolated it and not letting the low back do the work. Then we can add that bonus movement of doing little circles through the hip even as we lift it into extension. So this also drives cerebellar activity, which is just a fancy way of saying that it's helping your brain learn this position. And I teach this kind of thing in my functional neurology teacher training, so check out the description for more information on that. All right, come on, let's do the other side. So leg lifts up, maybe move through a few cat-cows, but then hold in cat position. And it's worthwhile doing these maybe in front of a mirror or videoing yourself so you can just check that no little compensatory movements are coming up, like twisting of that back leg so the knee points down and you're not moving around your upper body and other things like that. Remember, we're trying to isolate the movement just to that one joint. Finally, we can put these all together into what I call child's pose from hell. So again, starting in that tabletop position, you're gonna slide one leg back and crawl everything back until your hips are as close to that heel as possible. You can put something underneath if it's more comfortable on your knee. You don't want your knee to be in pain here, but lower your chest as close to your thigh as you can as well. So we're starting to resemble a child's pose. Now you're gonna lift the opposite arm up and maybe crawl it forward so you get that length, that pushing of the shoulder up towards the ear. And this could be enough for you, but if you really wanna go for it, lift the back leg and the arm up, and then make sure that you're pulling your ribs off of your thigh. So then, we get the whole kind of handstand shape, and you can even add circles here. Just make sure you're breathing. Ooh. Let's switch to the other side. So other leg comes back, 
slide your hip down towards that heel. No worries if you can't get all the way. Just do what you can. Then lower your chest as close to the thigh as you can. Lift the opposite arm up, crawling the fingers forward first. And then maybe, oh, everything lifts up. Can you lift your ribs off of your thigh as well? And this is how I come up with all of my drills, not just for handstand, but I look at the individual joint and the little micro movement that each little joint has to make. And where compensations may occur, and then I find ways to make sure you cannot compensate. Now, although we haven't done any handstands yet, I bet if you try now with a wall or whatever, you'll feel more stable because you've given your brain more information about these little micro movements that you need for a stable handstand. And when our joints are stable, our brain feels safe. And if our brain feels safe, we move better. So let me know if all of this makes sense. And if you enjoyed this video, then please hit like, subscribe, share with your friends. And I encourage you to check out Move with Adele, where I share two new classes every week, including yoga flows, meditations, workshops, workouts, and more. Thank you, and I'll see you again.